If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it. Are you looking for Rebel Clash codes? They are already available on Poton Store, as you can see, and you can use Tableman code for 5% off or for any purchase of all the other code cards they have. For the European players, Millipods Gaming has everything you need from collectibles to all the new Pokemon Sword and Shield cards and Rebel Clashes now in stock. Make sure you use Tableman code for 5% off your final purchase. and welcome back to another day of Road to Worlds, Road to Players Cup. I am not entirely sure <laughs> which one this is. However, um, however, we are going to be taking a look at the top 8 list by Andrew Wambolt, Spirit Tomb with a lot, a lot of Ultra Beasts, Spirit Tomb with a Building Spite Attack, you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon once during your turn, and I wish Cry does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So a pretty good attack. Pretty good ability, a lot of synergy. Obviously, every time you attack with Spirit Tomb, you're gonna be um, going down, right? Most likely, unless your opponent is heavily dead drawing. But the big idea is to change non GXs for, uh, or non Vs for GXs or Vs or V maxes in favorable traits. Now, Spirit Tomb is the main attacker, but you do have Nihiligo with a Nightcap attack. When your opponent has two prize cards remaining, you can choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it as his attack. We also have Baby Boswell Sledgehammer, 30 damage, and if they have 4 prize cards remaining, this attack does 90 more damage, pretty nice. We also have Tabufini for Baby Blastephalon, the Nature Wave attack only costs a colorless as long as they have an Ultra Beast in play, which obviously they always will have that. We have Jinx's ability, Ominous Posture, to move damage counters around from one Pokemon to another one, therefore allowing you to power up your Spirit Tombs. We have Fion to mess with the opponent's active. We have Buzzles and Formosa GX's GX attack beast game GX for 50 damage, possibly 80 with the beast energy in order to finish off something and get an extra prize card that way, but also Jet Punch can be pretty useful. We have the Denifer draw, we have Jirachi for consistency and we have Mew for bench protection. Now support this wise we have the good old 4 research for Marty which is pretty standard. We have our 3 Hustle Belts to power up Spirit Tomb when we have 30 or less HP remaining we do 60 more damage. And we have Aurora Energy, Rainbow Energy, Beast Energy, and a single Dark, which we can search with Viridian Forest if needed. We do have two Great Catchers and two Boss Sorters so that we can chase down um, threats on the bench, namely the Den AGXs to hopefully finish off games. And a bunch of switching cards, we have Acrobats to accelerate, Shrine for extra damage, and even putting damage on our own the Den can be useful to move around with Jinx. And so, I will not be playing an event today, um, the points are just not getting added up um, quickly enough. So you can see I was playing earlier, I got a win streak of 7 whilst I was getting my 11 wins um, of the day. Now I'm playing with my regular account. So yeah, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what, wow, even the even the camera got distorted with the sneeze. Let's see what we can do with this Spirit Tomb deck. Obviously it's a great anti-meta call. We have um, type advantage with Dark type against Charapult, the Baby Puzzle hits um, Pigram for a lot of damage. Obviously Spirit Tomb is useful in all the matchups, but then you have Tapufini for uh, the Baby Blast level 1 matchup. So you have basically every top deck covered. You don't have Fire though, you don't have a Fire type attack in order to cover um, Station, right? So that could be a major uh, weakness or area of opportunity of the deck. Alright. Alright. So we are up against Dragapult. So the issue against Dragapult is of course that they can just snipe Spirit Tombs on the bench. So either you bench two at the same time and therefore they have to choose which one they take down, or you bench it and then immediately power it up with Jinx. So we'll have to be very, very careful there. We will have to be very, very careful. All right. There's Inke. What? And it's 
drawing a Pokemon Warner. So, a Clashing Amber is now gone, that's really good. Before committing the Quick Ball, I'm gonna go ahead and still a Wish. I do find a Research and that's pretty nice. So like I said, I feel like my, my play here is there's no way for me to um, stop the Dragon Bolt, there's no way for me to snipe it. So the best thing that I can do is have both Spirit Tombs, right? Each with a damage counter. And then hope that my opponent doesn't have Fion or um, a Ghost Effect. Which does mean that might want to attach... I mean, if I attach a rainbow, that's definitely the one that's gonna go down, right? I feel like I should still do that. Like, just accept that my spirit tomb is gonna go down, go through more of my deck, there we go. That's definitely, definitely useful. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and bench the Jinx. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna save one damage counter from the Spirit Tomb onto the Jinx. And I'll... no, I won't bench the Fion. I should Quick Ball for, honestly, another Jirachi. Since I do have the Star Wish, I mean the Switching card, and then I'll pass. So I'm gonna be trading 2 for 3, right? And I am okay with that trade. I am honestly okay with that trade. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. All right. More than one one mile on my line, which is interesting. So how many damage counters do we need on the spirit tomb? We need five in order to get a KO. Yeah, so goodbye spirit tomb. So we are guaranteed one from the ability, that's two, one from Jinx, that's three, and one from the rainbow, that's four. <clears throat> So there is a chance, right? There is a chance we get there. Or we just need the, the hustle belt, right? That's also the other possibility. So let me go ahead and do this. And I feel like finding the Jinx is better only because um, I have two of the spirit tombs. I'll go ahead and Stella Wish. Oof. I'll grab the Acrobike, I really need to see as many cards as I can here. And that's not super useful. The puzzle is not going to be super useful in this matchup. So I'll attach the rainbow and I'll research. So I'm hoping for a stadium or another spirit tomb. I mean, not the stadium, the hustle belt. And I do find the hustle belt. So I can definitely bench the other spirit tomb now with no threat of a backup Dragapult. I can't Building Spite. I can't Building Spite with this one. And I have Boss's Orders to chase another Dragapult, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and Ominous Posture from Jinx to this one. And... That's enough, right? Fairly sure that's enough. 10 plus... Yeah, that's exactly 320. Perfect. Perfect. We get this scale. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, we planned for this, right? We planned for this, we gave ourselves a chance, we found both cards we needed. So things are looking up. Yeah, things are looking pretty great. Um, there's another Dragapult, we do have the boss disorders. I do have to go after this guy, hopefully my hand doesn't get Marty. Because if it does, then I would be in a lot of trouble. I do have one Spirit Tomb left though. 
So I'd have to play with the damage, right? I would have to play with the damage. The Crush Hammer, not that impactful, since I do have other energies available. I wonder if my opponent's just gonna KO me. Uh, no, he's gonna go boss disorders. Wait, what? What? I did. Okay, so. What does that boss disorders accomplish? Huh? Why wouldn't you want to be the one that has the puzzle belt? I definitely did not understand that. I definitely did not understand that. Boss disorders. Uh, but I'll take it, right? Um, so I get this KO. So what I'm really looking for is a backup attacker, right? So I'm liking this Marty. I am liking this Marty. I'll go ahead and attach here, discarding the Jirachi. Find a bench on our Jirachi. Bench this guy. Bench down the Nihiligo, right? Because I might end up using that attack. And then I'll go ahead and I could switch just to get another Stella Wish. Yeah, that seems good. And then I'll Marnie. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and Stella Wish. None of these cards are super useful, but I might have to dig for the Spirit Tomb, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. So I'm gonna use Building Spite, and then I'm gonna transfer the damage counter onto the Jinx, all right? That way it's spread, I get to conserve the damage counter, and I wish try 320 damage. A simple Mew, right, or Sixagon could finish off my Spiritum. That's the biggest issue. I also have a lot of energy in my hand, and I've lost a few of them as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would only have one rainbow left to attack. One spirit tomb and one rainbow left if I had to, if I ended up using research here. Yeah, so this Dragapult. I will not be able to go with this guy. Huh. Wait, what? I don't understand my opponent's moves. I really don't. Why would you use Fion? You literally just saved my last attacker. Why wouldn't you just deal 10 damage to a Spiritum and KO it? My third out of four Spiritum. I don't understand. <sighs> it feels like my opponent's just playing the cards that he can, but not quite like playing for any particular purpose. Okay, there is a six segue. Okay. Still though, like, I don't know. I guess he opened up the bench space for like six again, like he could have just done it here instead of, I don't know. Because what if he didn't find the six again, right? What if he actually did not find the six again? Okay, so it's gonna come down to can I find that? <clears throat> can I find my last quick wall and or last rainbow? <sighs> Very nice. Okay, so that gets me the Spirit Tomb. And I, I need my Hustle Belt as well, right? I need my Hustle Belt in order to win. So I will do this. Uh, yeah, I do need my Hustle Belt to win. So I'm gonna research, I'll look at the next seven. I also have a Dead Age change in case I don't find it. This should be plenty though. This should be plenty. Some Looking, yeah, I'm looking at every card in my deck basically. So I am looking at every card in my deck. 
So big, big play here, conserving that one damage counter, right? That one, one damage counter from Jinx ends up being huge. Literally keeping damage on my side of the match ends up winning me the game against Dragon Ball. So pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty happy about that victory. See, I've already done <laughs> the 12 wins today. Already done the 11 wins, I guess. The 12th win, like, 5 coins for each subsequent win is not a big deal. I also got the 10 tickets, which is important. I haven't, like, I've only gotten credit for, like, 4 of the 8 tournaments I've played in. So, not very happy about that. I am not very happy about that. Okay, let's see if we can showcase another match, right? There you saw, like, the type advantage was absolutely huge there. Absolutely huge. Alright. I would like to go first. Pretty okay start, for sure, pretty okay start. Alright. Okay, and we are up against Baby Plan. So, it's not a super, super priority to find... Um, to find a Spirit Tomb. Um, I'm definitely just gonna discard the puzzle for Moza. I don't want to be put in a situation where I have to use it. I will have Fini to trade one for one at some point, which is very nice. And now I could get my Jirachi taken down. I feel like keeping Jinx is important, so I'm just gonna pass here. Just gonna pass with this. If I can knock out the Jirachi with a Spirit Tomb, that'll be much better, right? Okay, that the Dene being on the bench also means we have access to a very easy two prize cards. Like, even if my opponent got a KO here, and then we got a KO, and then they got a KO, and then we got a KO. Which is usually how you want to trade. Like, if you are a non GX versus a non GX deck and you get the advantage that way, then. Um, like, that should be pretty good for you. For the most part, um, in terms of. Um, like the person who gets the first KO and then if they can keep getting six KOs and that's huge. However, if at any point you bench a GX and it gets targeted or AD and it gets targeted, then the price trade-off no longer works for you. So, all right. Okay, so my opponent decides to pass. I have the guaranteed knockout on the Drachi if I can avoid that. Uh, not a fan of that top deck, but uh, well. Um, could have considered Right. Could have considered Stella Wishing actually, because I talked of that. Um, no attachment feels bad. No attachment feels bad. It's not the end of the world, but I'm also not happy about it. Uh, I did price two Spirit Tombs, that's actually not great at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and build these fights. And then. Yeah, it is important to start applying pressure, right? Because there's no guarantee that my opponent even has knockout either, so... The important thing is getting a price card every turn or almost every turn, so... We'll see. Alright. So my opponent will be looking for... Um, we'll be looking for Welder, of course. Does need another three fires in order to get a KO. I'm probably trying to think to find that Welder, I would imagine. I would imagine that's the case, right? 
I would imagine that is what's happening right now. Right. Acrobatic. So there's a welder, we'll obviously have a switching card. So I do expect my Fini to go down, but that's fine. I also have Ordinary Rock, so at some point I should be able to recover the Fini perhaps, hopefully. Um, I do have ways to increase four damage counters, all I need, and I do have four damage counters, provided I have a rainbow, I find a rainbow energy. Um, or the, the tool, right? Or I can find the tool. I guess didn't have the switching card, so um, we continue our win streak. Let's see how high we can get it to with the spirit of deck. Let's see if we can make it a 10 win streak with the next game. Um, I definitely think the spirit of deck was favored in that instance. Um, I guess you could play something like Sky Pillar to try and fight the. Um, the Dragapult matchup a little more, but as you saw, like establishing the double Spirit Tomb, you end up trading two for three, which will always be favorable for you. I do get to go first as well, which is awesome. And I get a hello, I'll say hello back. Right. Right. So a third Jirachi start, right? Three Jirachi starts back to back to back. Not bad, not bad at all. Tool Scrapper. I'm assuming we're up against like um, Bikram, right? Uh, Baby Buzzle is priced, so that's bad news for us. Go ahead and still wish for this. All right, so. The question is, do I retreat into something like the Jinx? Because Jirachi could be handy and could go down to double Electro Power plus the Spike Draw. I'll play, well, I'll play this to pressure the Thunder Mountain because I already have one in my hand. And then I'll go ahead and pass. I have a feeling my Dratch will go down, but there's not much I could do about it. Yeah. Alright. So there's a double peek around from the tag call. Likely gonna see the prism star off of that quick wall, or not. Oh, this is green speaker on then. Wait, what? So what was the tackle then? Okay, Thunder Mountain and another quick wall. So we'll have access to both prism stars, like I said. I'm happy with this. And my opponent immediately discards a power plant, so that's gonna be really good news for the shrine. And fails the quick roll though. Actually fails the quick roll, so that's really good. That means yeah, my opponent's Kogo Prism is priced, right? So that's 
Awesome thing number one. And number two, he discarded another of his stadiums. So I'm liking our situation. That means my opponent's attack might be delayed by two more turns. Now, which is fantastic, right? It's absolutely fantastic. Now, it does suck that <laughs> I not find that energy. So perhaps this Acrobike can get me there. Uh, not quite. I could then it change. I feel like that's worth it. Yeah, I honestly do think that a changing here is worth it because I have a really big advantage right now, and I really want to. Um, I really want to continue it. So I'm sorry, Nihiligo. I'm sorry, Marnie, but I really just want ideally a rainbow. Right? No choice there, obviously. And gee. <laughs> All right, so then the card to this card would be the switch. All right, so I want to use building spite. I'm going to use building spite. And the maximum amount of damage I deal right now is 160. And I could just lose my spirit tomb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer one energy from the Garachi to the Jinx. Uh, probably should have been to spirit tomb actually. And we're gonna pass for now. There's no point in attacking my Coco and losing a Spirit Tomb when I can just one KO the next turn, right? So, well, I should have transferred the damage to the Coco though. That was very silly. That was actually very silly on my part. Very, very silly. Cause now we're gonna need our Rainbow Energy. And Adult, oh, yeah, that was a bad, that, that was a silly mistake. That was a very silly mistake. So we see another Grease, along with another Speed Energy. So far, so good, I'd say. Um, I do lose my two tool cards. The Skateboard and the Jirachi is especially annoying. That might actually delay my attack by a turn. Right? Not the end of the world, not great. A third stadium. Third stadium, okay, I did find the rainbow. So let me think this through. I mean, there's also like no point in KOing the Coco. Right? There's like no point to KOing the Coco. Um, because then I'll still have to knock out two pgrams anyways. I mean, I guess the point to KO in Coco is um, the reason to KO Coco is freeing up the baby boss from my uh, from my prizes. So. Might be worth it. Or I could just go after the P-Grom immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and build its bite. Building spite. Building spite. Honestly, because of the puzzle. Huh. Do I just great catch it? No, because my hand is also dead. My hand is also dead, so I want to move the damage here from here, or from here to here. Then I'm going to Anguish Cry, 120 damage, 
10 damage off from KOing those Pikarums. I do find the rainbow and not quite the baby buzz that we were hoping for. Not quite the baby buzz that we were hoping for. Let's see, Poke Gear. See, a Poke Gear. See, greens. Reset stamp and Mahalo Lana. Okay. Are we gonna get reset stamped right now? Okay. I don't mind that too too much. My hand wasn't super great. Honestly. My hand wasn't the greatest. Person goes down. Powers off the bench as expected. There's three greens gone, so the odds of him have finding tax switch to to KO us are not very high, I would hope. Okay, that rainbow is pretty nice. Rainbow is actually pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and Stella Wish. I'll just fail it. Well, no, I'll grab the Green Catcher. And then I'll go ahead and switch. Being 10 damage off is so sad though. Being 10 damage off is just so sad. Okay, I'm gonna Building Spite. And I'm gonna Building Spite. I honestly feel like I should protect my bench. I really feel like I should protect my bench, even though I'm not necessarily super threatened. Okay, what could happen here is I could end up carrying the Pigrom with Buzz's GX's GX attack, which gets me the extra prize, which gets me the one. So. Maybe that's my win condition. Maybe that's my win condition. We'll see. We shall see. We got a recent attempt again from two to four. Weird choice by my opponent, honestly. And I'd say even a big waste. I'd say a big waste of a reset stamp. But hey, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Alright. This is Mahalan Malulanan. Wait, how did he hit? Oh, he played a great potion. Okay. 50 damage is not enough to kill the Pikarum. 50 damage is not enough to kill the Pigron with the GX attack. Okay, so the Den is now gone. Honestly... I think I just attack this guy again with this, right? Why not? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this energy here. 
I'm feeling pretty confident, honestly, at this point. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have the win in hand. We have the win in hand. I'll go ahead and building spike here. Go ahead and building spike here. Go ahead and move the damage from Jinx to this Spirit Tomb. And then we'll go ahead and not building spike with the active, just Anguish Cry. And we should be able to win next turn if I'm reading this correctly. Peace game, your opponent's problem is knocked out by damage defense attack. Take one more Pride Scarf. Yeah. So I don't kill this guy, I do kill this guy. And I have this to chase this guy wherever it goes. So we should be good. We should be good to go in the next. That doesn't matter. Probably will go after the Mew, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So that's gonna be game. That is going to be GG. This guy retry retreats for one energy, so that's perfect. And then we'll go bench, attach, retreat, and beast game GX. Three prizes from the Pigram, one extra prize from our GX attack. And that's going to be GG with the puzzle being in our prize cards. Not bad at all. My opponent very correctly skipped the beast. The beast um, the puzzle turn, right, without knowing that it was prized, but um, he played it pretty correctly. I feel like his turn one, though, was pretty awkward because he went for the stadium on purpose, uh, disregarding the, and played it, disregarding the fact that his Togo Prism was prized, so felt like that wasn't a great call. But other than that, my opponent played it pretty well and made all the right choices, except in the beginning, he just got delayed, and it turns out that KOing that Coco. Ended up being ended up mattering quite a bit because it allowed us to just kill one pigram with beast game for the game. That's gonna be it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.